hey guys, here to talk to you today about five cybersecurity tools that will help you find hidden threats. I know that there's a lot of buzzwords and marketing, and so I'm an IT technician, engineer, just like you, been in the space for 20 plus years now. And so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about them from engineer to engineer. When, when we look at the tools and the software and the hardware that's in the space, there's, there's a ton of tools that you could use in the cybersecurity space. Just go out and do a search and you'll find it, right? There's a lot. We're here today, we're gonna to talk about five tools that we feel like get the most traction or the most bang for your buck um, right out of the gate. One is having up-to-date firewalls. And what I mean by up-to-date, you could use the words next gen, you could wor use the words latest and greatest, there's a couple feature functions that I wanna focus in on. Um, so when you're looking at next-gen firewalls or the latest firewalls, you wanna be able to see application layer traffic. So oftentimes known as layer seven. But you need that granular visibility inside of the firewalls in order to be able to tell, for instance, um, a gaming uh, chat traffic separate from the actual game itself. Or for instance, uh, another um, perfect one is Facebook Messenger, uh, also with Facebook traffic. And so historically, you maybe just seen them in the firewall as Facebook traffic or YouTube traffic. But now you actually see that the Messenger traffic or the chat traffic or the actual streaming service is separate um, outside of the rest of the traffic. And so that's really important. Next-gen firewalls offer a few other features. Um, they actually give you um, the capability of APIs and to be able to talk to your firewall and make on-demand requests to them. So I'll give you a couple examples. Palo Alto, Cisco, Fortinet. I'm not um, pushing any of those products other than the fact that they all have relatively good APIs or a way to communicate with the firewall and make on-demand changes from a cybersecurity product, okay? So for instance, you might add to the dynamic list, you might add uh, something to the firewall on-demand through a, a SOAR product, a security orchestration and automated incident response product, right? So when you're looking at that, firewalls are important. Although you don't want to get hitched on firewalls because now today we have such a distributed um, workforce that firewalls aren't always uh, possible, but they are inside the enterprise. They are in AWS and Azure. Um, a couple of uh, other tools that I want to point out are some latest antivirus tools or anti-malware tools. So I'm going to name a couple of manufacturers. Again, I'm not pushing the products, but when you look at Carbon Black, or you look at Silence, or you look at Sentinel One, or even CrowdStrike. There's some good aspects of those products versus maybe like products that were made five, 10, 15 years ago that were legacy products. They were heavily based on signature detection. Now you want an antivirus, anti-malware product that is more along the lines of a algorithm-based detection model. And that also falls into the EDR category, um, electronic detection and response, meaning that there is some sort of an API or the ability to communicate back through that um, antivirus, anti-malware product, and you can uh, stop a process or you can query um, something in memory. Uh, so for instance, like Carbon Black and Silence and even CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1, all of those products have very robust features within them that allow you to see granular detail and help the engine make some decisions. The next set of tools that I wanna to talk to you about is some penetration testing tools. So to get specific, there's a few tools that we would recommend. You want to be able to pen test your environment or you want to be able to have an outside third party do pen testing against your environment because you want to know what the attackers or the criminal hackers can see on your environment. Um, it's kind of like uh, if you were a criminal, you would drive by uh, the house, right? You would see what the house looks like at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. And you would take a look at 
what the front door looks like and the windows look like and all of those types of things. You would try and find the vulnerabilities of a home. In this case, from the public perspective, we want to understand what the vulnerabilities are from the public internet and kind of test those, poke and prod at them. You may even want to do a internal pen test and this way here you can understand what your vulnerabilities look like from the internal side of the organization as well. I would start with vulnerability scanning, meaning that I would go through like Tenable, uh, Nessus, or Qualys, or some sort of vulnerability scanning tool that allows you to understand what your vulnerabilities are today. And then you could move to an exploit type tool. And um, there's a number of tools that you can do that with. Uh, Metasploit, uh, Nmap, and Wireshark are all good programs to use when you are starting to do some uh, discovery and some understanding of your network externally and internally. Another key aspect that I want to uh, cover in this five tools that you can use for hidden threats is understanding your encryption keys and your SSL certificates across your environment. You should really be asking yourself what data should be encrypted on your network at rest and in flight, and what risk does it pose to the organization if it was captured and it was not encrypted. A key part of this is that even if you are going to um, encrypt your data, it is really good to change the encryption keys and the SSL certificates in your environment on a regular basis. This way here, if a, a third party that you got your SSL certificates from or your encryption keys, if they got breached and those encryption keys were then inside the public domain somewhere or in the dark web, a regular rotation of those keys at least keeps you protected from uh, going unnoticed because it's, it's going to be a, uh, some sort of time, either one month, three months, six months, before that manufacturer, that vendor says, hey, we were breached, we were breached on such and such a date. And so this way here, if you rotate your keys and your SSL certificates once a month, once every two months, once every three months, it reduces your risk exposure. And then the fifth uh, tool here is, is the big one. So talking about SIM, and SIM is really important to have visibility across the entire environment. It can help you understand, you can ingest the logs from a Tenable Nessus or a Qualys vulnerability scanning tool. You can ingest the logs from Nmap and Wireshark into a SIM. You can ingest the logs from any of these tools and you can essentially create a single source of truth for your cybersecurity posture. Super important because not only do the security individuals look at this tool and work out of it all day, every day, but it can also help other departments within inside your organization make decisions based on your security posture and what you're seeing. So if you said to your organization, we need to make this change uh, based on security, well then you could show them based on the information, dashboards and the information inside the SIM, why you want to make the change in the importance to making the change. So it helps you with interdepartment communication and collaboration. While using the SIM, it does a really great job of aggregating the information across the entire infrastructure and helps you discern and decide whether that is a security incident, event, or a real breach. This data can help you communicate with the rest of your team members and make a decision in real time.